Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boobie! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Doctor Movie Show, where uh, we're covering our favorite movies, and we're going to jump right into, not only is it a great George Romero movie, actually, it's my favorite George Romero movie. I can't believe it's taken me this long to actually get to it, but it's the 1973 horror slash sci-fi movie. That's what they say on, you know, Google, anyways. Um, it's the crazies. Uh, yes, we've had the remake, which I think was good. Um, not crazy about the Twister-style ending of it. But, uh, you know, I need to talk about that one, too. But we're talking about the original one. And as I said, this is actually my favorite George Romero movie. Um, when you look at the history of George Romero and what makes him a legend was the storytelling of the people involved in the uh, the things the the things they're having to endeavor right so um, if you took the zombies out of night of the living dead dawn of the dead day of the dead and you replaced it with another epidemic or um, any any kind of stressful situation that's you know gonna make people react and kind of you know, turn on each other. That's the history of George Romero. The the zombies were just the the fallback. The beauty of that is it made us also the monster, right? So not only are we, you know, the, the monster in real life, we're the monster even after death, the thing that comes back and haunts us. So uh, the crazies really takes that formula and makes it just a a tad more realistic it's almost like the idea of why we have the zombies roaming the earth and just dialing it back a little bit and just making it something that that afflicts normal everyday life people in Pennsylvania so that's kind of what we're getting out of this one let's look a military plane crashes near a small town infecting the water supply with a deadly virus is it a virus I guess it's a virus uh, that causes insanely, insanity, sorry, causes insanity, then death. The army moves in to control the situation, only for the civilians to treat them as invaders and then infect them as well. So yeah, it's, it's a quarantine movie. It's, it's, it's outbreak. This movie is outbreak before outbreak, but you get a little more drastic things happening. It's, it's not just you know, leading to your own death because of a virus taking over your body. This thing makes you go nuts, right? The crazies. So, yeah. Uh, why to watch? It's violent, frantic, and suspenseful. Yeah, here's the other thing, too. It's George Romero. This movie is made for 200000 maybe two fifty. Put that in perspective. For 1973... Not even a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, think about what movies cost now. You're not going to find anything. I mean, even in the low budget, nothing even comes close to that money amount. And I know inflation and times change. But still, if you did that based on even even inflation, we don't come close to making a movie with this kind of money. Um, so I'm going to say George Romero is really the king of low budget to get this kind of quality and this kind of storytelling out of that little money is pretty pretty impossible <laughs> um, but yeah uh, it gets a 6.1 out of 10 yeah I can get down with that uh, as far as a cast we don't have a lot to talk about um, we do have uh, uh, Heroin Jones is in this uh, Sorry, I'm at a stoplight. You hear my blinker. He was also in Night Riders. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that George liked to use from time to time. We've got uh, some familiar faces, right? I mean, when you come down to it, there's there's 
a few people here that you see in several other Romero flicks, such as uh, Richard Liberty, who is just one of the people. His, his daughter is Lynn Lowry, which Lynn Lowry we know for, you know, all the stuff that she does, uh, Shivers, all those movies. Um, and we've got uh, Will McMillan, who I think was on a soap opera at this point. Uh, kind of a handsome, kind of rugged uh, looking guy. Uh, reminds me of uh, Buddy Ravel <laughs> from 3 O'Clock High. That's kind of who he looks like. Or maybe Buddy Ravel looks like him. We've also got Richard France in this, which, I mean, uh, you know, one of, one of my favorite podcasters, uh, Lee Russell, has got a show called They Must Be Destroyed On Sight. And that's a line from Richard France. In uh, um, Dawn of the Dead, I believe, and uh, yeah, I, it's that's that's the most part of your cast. You get some other people that pop in from time to time that you might have seen in some other things, but for the most part, that's your cast. The fact that this movie uh, starts off with these two little kids, by the way. Uh, it's on Tubi, and the print that they got is really good. Um, I've, I've had multiple copies of this movie that were not that great. This one looks fantastic. And um, But it starts off, these two little kids are, like, getting ready for bed, but they're kind of playing. It's a brother and sister, and they're kind of goofing around. They're, you know, eight, nine years old, if that. And... Uh, they hear something and they see a shadow and, and it's obviously somebody throwing a fit and they turn around and look and their dad is like destroying a bookshelf and he's breaking stuff with a crowbar and they're freaking out and they realize that the floor is wet and then they smell of it and realize it's kerosene so the dad has spilt kerosene everywhere in the house and he's going crazy they go to wake up the mom who's in the bed and she's dead so he's killed his wife and then he sets the house on fire with the kids in it. <laughs> and uh, that's the opening of the movie. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's pretty traumatic. And we go from there to uh, our main characters who work for the fire department. And then, uh, uh, what's her name? Lane Carroll plays Jody. She's... She's a nurse. She works for the local doctor. She's uh, married. I think she's married, or she's at least coupled up with our main character, um, David, and uh, which is Will McMillan. And uh, starts off there in bed, and uh, the phone rings. There's been a fire, so he works on the fire department with the our other main character. And they have to respond to the fire. The nurse gets a call, too, that she needs to come down to the, to the doctor's office. So, apparently the kids get out, but they're burnt pretty badly. They got the dad in a squad car, and he's looking at the house and yelling at the house for the kids to jump out the window. So, obviously, he has lost it, right? Uh, they said one minute they found him, he was laughing and angry and then after he kind of realized what he did he started sobbing like a baby and his so his emotions are just all over the place well with this going on at the same time military guys start showing up and they go to the doctor's office and you find out that there's been a plane crash code named Trixie which is the the other name for this movie I think they tried that first and it just didn't work so they bounce a bunch of names around and you come up with the crazies so i think the name probably hurt this movie i think code name trixie is not a great name either because you don't know what you're getting into but uh needless to say george delivers with this one right so the military is starts quarantining the town but here's the thing all the military that's going into town and rounding up the people are wearing hazmat suits. So they're wearing the white suits with the face mask, and they look terrifying. 
and they're trying to round people up and people are scared out of their minds because they don't know that this is the military. It's just a bunch of dudes in hazmat suits. But they're going around and getting everybody and trying to get them to go to the high school, put them in the gym, keep them all quarantined. It's a little small town in Pennsylvania. And, you know, the police start reacting. They don't like what's going on. The mayor is not happy. And things just start getting out of control. But what happens is this chemical is spilt into the water supply. People drink the water. And they start going bonkers, right? And obviously it's already starting to affect people. And uh, so from there, you're on this mission, I guess you'd say, with our group of main characters who are trying to get out of there. Uh, the doctor sees what's coming ahead with more and more military showing up, the quarantine, and he tells the nurse, hey, for your own safety and the and, and She's pregnant, so for the baby's safety, here, take take some of these antibiotics, take some of these stuff with you, some syringe, syringes, and prepare yourself and get out of here. So at the same time, uh, after the fire is over and the guys are done with that, they're driving and they see Jody going the other direction. So David wants to turn around and catch her and see what's going on, why is she leaving. So that's when we find out they get stopped by uh, some military people can't get out and start, they start running on foot at some point and then from there on the military has been given the go ahead to shoot and kill anybody that runs that's how crazy this thing has gotten now here's the thing um, the chaos that this causes in the whole system and here's the th the real thing about this. You think back to, you know, our situation we just had with COVID, right? Which is probably not going to be the last one. The fact that this thing kind of just came out of nowhere, started affecting people. We started quarantining people. People started kind of going crazy because you're locked up. You can't go out and live your normal life. We have lived this. Not near as drastic. Again, we make movies to help us deal with the reality of things that really happen. But that movie, this movie is really pushing if, what if this happened to a small town, which we saw it on a larger scale. Look at our leadership, our government, trying to keep people calm and make people stay at home and stuff. But look how you get a rebellious group as well, right? Same thing. That's just the way people react, right? Um, some people follow, some people try to think for themselves, right? And that's where you get this imbalance and you get the government losing control or the military losing control and then it leads to people dying for no necessary reasons, right? But it happens. Uh, but it also causes this fear and anxiety in the people, even though they don't know that everybody can get infected by this. Um, it causes the chaos. There's a scene where at a church, the priest uh, is trying to have church, and the military shows up, try to shut them down. Sound familiar? Um, and the priest runs outside. He's, he's knowing this is kind of end of days kind of thing. And he goes out here and pours gasoline all over himself and sets himself on fire on, in the street. Shocking. I mean, it's, it is. It's absolutely shocking. When... When a spiritual leader has this level of anxiety of what's going on, this is the answer. Uh, wow. I mean, of course, the priests, you know, they're ready to go, right? They're ready, I mean, they're, they, they punched their ticket. They're ready to get out of here anyways. I don't know that speeding up that process is the right answer. That's kind of what you get. So from there on, we meet up with another couple, which is a dad and, and daughter team father and daughter team which is Lynn Lowry and Richard Liberty they start hanging out with our initial group here who's trying to run for cover um, and things just keep getting crazier as we go along um, people in our group start losing their wits uh, and at the end of the day David his main goal is just to save his wife save the child and uh, again, I don't want to ruin too much of it because this this is to me it's a must watch. 
because it's just a little too on the nose. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that's why I've always liked this one because, again, you take the zombies out of it and you make it a more realistic thing. Uh, look at all the movies we've had that are about, about the basic same thing. Outbreak. Uh, this movie even feels like Red Dawn because of the, the quarantine, keeping people locked up. You got the group that's outside that's trying to help the people that's inside. It has a very Red Dawn feel about it, but it's more of fighting your own military instead of uh, some outside military force. So I'm, I'm telling you, uh, these are the real scary things in life, right? Uh, if things got bad enough, yes, I think the government would try to come in because it's a cover-up operation too, right? They don't want this leaked out to the entire United States because everybody would panic, right? So let's quarantine it. Uh, we got bombers that are flying overhead at all times because if we feel like it's a lost cause, we'll just tell them to drop the bombs and kill everybody. At the same time, we've got our doctor, uh, the guy that created Trixie, which is the the chemical that we're talking about here that they created for mil military warfare. Uh, Richard France is the doctor, and he's trying to work on a vaccine, right, to fix the problem. So the whole movie, he's locked up in a lab in this small town, and he's trying to fix the problem. And he finally figures it out, but can't quite get it delivered. So uh, there you go. Spent the whole time working on this, and it's just too late. Um, so this movie kind of highlights with, they started getting reports that the spread is in other places. And uh, I'm just going to kind of leave it there. I, again, I, I can't say enough of this one. I, I, I love the the realistic feel and, and again it, it kind of hits home because we just recently went through something similar to this um, there is no doubt that if something like this happened in a small town the military would do something like this right and just that scary force the fact that you did this to us and now you're going to come and keep us from telling the world we're going to die because of something that you guys did so you have the upper hand, you know, uh, that's a really scary thought. How free are we really, right? Uh, even if you're from another country, I'm sure you get the same fears, right? Because they've got pretty much absolute power. But the problem is, is we gave them absolute power. We can also take it back. We're just a little, we're too scared to, right? Which, you know, it's the last thing they want, right? Uh, so there you go. I just I think this is just a it's a necessary watch. Is it scary? Um, yes, but not on a level of a horror movie. You know, kind of scary. Um, again, the monster is us. We did this to ourselves, and all the innocence that was lost because we couldn't shut down a lab in China. I mean, uh, we couldn't. Uh, control an airplane crash in Pennsylvania. See the similarities? Yeah. Alright, folks. Again, I, I'm not a political guy. Uh, well, let's just say I'm not on a side. Because I think they're all wrong. They're all corrupt. And uh, this kind of brings that to light. It doesn't matter. You know, right? COVID killed you. It didn't matter if you were blue or red or independent, or whatever you are. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter what nationality you were, what race you were, what gender you are. It doesn't matter, right? We kind of lose focus on what's important because we feel like all of these things are our individuality, but it's really not. These are the things that are used to keep us separated. But at the end of the day, we all check in and we all check out the same way, right? All right, folks, that's all I got on this one. Hope I didn't bring you down. I just think this is a very necessary watch. I think it's Romero's best movie. Um, and again, for the budget, I, I would love to see them go back and fix some of the sound. But 
you kind of want to leave a movie as it is too but there's some sound effects that nowadays you could go back and make more uh, realistic and uh, but this print I'm telling you the one on Tubi is really really good so check it out let me know what you think that's it for this one we will check you later